here in Columbus, Georgia. So when I graduated, I just came down here to beautiful Columbus, Georgia. It really is. Yeah. So um, I am a social worker. I have a master's degree in social work um, and I got my license. So I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I've been working in mental health for 12 years now, all sorts. Um, I work with the homeless mentally ill. I've worked with um, children to adults. I've also worked with um, addictions. So I kind of have a broad range. I also work yeah. in a mental health hospital on the forensic unit. So Ooh, um, the yeah. dark side, the crim criminally insane. That, that's um, to be kind of, kind of fun in a way. Yeah, it was very interesting. I mean, you know, you never think, even as a social worker, you never think that you're going to be sitting across eating lunch with pedophiles or people who murdered their family members, you know, and just seeing the humanity in everybody. And I think that was the good of that experience, like. I'm, I'm enjoying the company of this person, even though I know what they've done, and they don't even know what they've done. Some of them, you know, had mm -hmm. killed their mothers and were asking, where's my mom, you know? Um, so it's really interesting. Um, but what I love about mental health, I think, is that, well, I like to call it mental, mental wellness, because mental health I like is, that. I like that a lot. It's kind of associated with illness. You know, I'm saying mental health, but I think a lot of people here mental illness when you say mental health so mm -hmm. like we all need mental wellness but i think that um just like a guy who had diabetes he ended up on the forensic unit because he tried to stab one of his co-workers because they wouldn't get him well he didn't he had been going so long getting insulin under the table he was in a small rural town that um his blood sugars were out of control and so it mimicked symptoms of bipolar he didn't have bipolar he just had diabetes he got diagnosed for bipolar. He was at first until we figured out that it was actually his diabetes, his blood wow. sugar out of control. Yeah, I had no idea that. That sounds like something that should be in an episode of Dr. House. Yes, <laughs> I know, hey, idea. Heard it here first, right? But that really happened. That was really cool. So I really like this turn that we took, even though I didn't expect it would take this turn, but I really like it because uh, as you guys know, I'm also a graduate student of psychology. So I'm going to focus some of the stuff on mental health and mental wellness. Yeah. I really like what you said about how, you know, you can see something good in everybody just because they did like one terrible thing. You learn to yeah. not discount them completely as yeah. a human being. So do you feel, um, we already talked about why you studied to a ballet. Um, do you feel like ballet helps you at the end of the day to kind of like finish the day off in the right way or like what's it do for you? Oh, wow, confidence, um, there's a measure of freedom, 
and discipline. Um, just it it's very um, liberating, liberating, mm -hmm. and just, just you know it distracts you from maybe other things going on. You can feel accomplished, and I love uh, just I love where like seeing my progress. Mm -hmm. You know, when you take on something new, especially as an adult that you ha didn't have a good experience with and you're seeing that progress, you know? Oh, okay. Can you um, talk about a little bit, we were talking off camera about how you had a kind of a bad experience as a, as a child because but it was with the violin, but it applies to ballet too. So how did the teacher would yell at you and stuff? Yeah, <laughs> so I play the violin. I played the violin from fourth grade to 12th grade. And the reason I didn't do it in college was because my high school orchestra teacher was just really mean and not patient at all very like if you did something one little thing wrong she would like degrade you and it's just not a pleasant experience and I did not want to go through that in college like I did not so that's why I gave up playing the violin you know I wish I had kept doing it but sometimes you know you have that teacher that's just just you know, breaks your soul. Right. And then, so it makes it not fun. And Natasha is just the exact opposite. Like, I love coming to her classes. She's oh. very encouraging. Um, if you make a mistake, it's not like a degrading type of thing. It's more of a, like, you can do better. She's very, I mean, she corrects your mistakes, but it's not like in a, it's in an uplifting and edifying type of way. It's not in a, you suck. And, you know, this, you know, this type making you feel like you're a horrible person. And I think that having that experience with the orchestra teacher can be like a, you know. Yeah, and I think for a lot of adults that quit, like myself, I quit ballet when I was about 14 and I don't exactly remember why, but I'm pretty sure that that type of behavior from the teachers was part of it. Cause yeah. in, in the, I guess, in the arts, ballet, dance, music culture, there is a, when you're, a kid in a professional type yeah. tra track is just totally normal for the um, instructors to just put you down and mm. you know sometimes that's just uh, yeah. not the right thing to do right. and it's a lot of pressure I think as, as adults too a, a lot of adults might be intimidated to come back to ballet because mm -hmm. they think like oh well I don't want to go back to that I don't need anybody yeah. to tell me I suck <laughs> on a yeah. daily basis yeah so we just kind of wanted to let you know that the adult ballet community is, is much different. Yes. Like I have a teacher that I go to and she's she's quite old school, Miss Carol. Hi Miss Carol, I love you. And but she's very strict, but she is very encouraging. And she yeah. she never puts us down. Um in one of the classes I attend is actually uh it's a ballet six, I think. It's for you know some of the pre-professional students go to it. Mm -hmm. And she gives the adults and the pre-professional girls the same treatment. She corrects us, but she, it's not like a, oh, you know, you're never going to be anything type of yeah, yeah. witchcraft. And yeah. then what she does, she, which Miss Carol gives you a compliment. She does give them, but she's not giving them like, you know, yeah. but when yeah. she gives you one, you really feel like, oh, wow, I'm making progress. So. Yeah, you feel like, oh, thanks. Like that girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's what we wanted to share is that a yeah. ballet is not like you know your old ballet teacher with a stick. Yes, yeah, and um, I think all your fitness journey should be something that encourages you and empowers you. It makes you feel alive and not like oh I have to lift weights and then maybe that's not for you. There is like I know people you know know things in life that are negative. You don't want to go to your workout or you know yeah. class that you chose to take that you're paying for and exactly you put down but i do threaten to electrocute them sometimes but yes yes she does. i'm not gonna do it <laughs> yeah so we can be better we can, we can be better dancers so <laughs> you might need to be stop it's a shock stop it. it's like that it's like that i just have this idea that like people don't like pain right yeah <laughs> so if i had like a electric shock stick and then they weren't like turning out enough I could just go like <laughs> no like your turn out then you'd really go Whoa! <laughs> but I don't know if I can make this into like viable reason <laughs> there might be some ethics problem yeah there might be but we'll see pull out the paddle yes <laughs> Ooh, <kinky. laughs> yeah looks good though I know so 
that's right. Yeah. Tell me. You're about to go get point shoes with me at Grit and Grace. We're yeah. super excited. In Noonan, Georgia. Yeah. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Me either. So by the time you guys see this, she will have just gotten her point shoes. So. Oh, look at that. Looks so nice. <laughs> so tell me. What they do, you have been coming to my classes for about two to six months now. Yeah. Yeah. Seven, well, seven months. I yes. started in December. I gave you the six month necklaces. Yeah. I'll talk about that later. But mm -hmm. um, so, what made you decide to do point? Did you do point as a kid? No, never no, did. I did not. I did not do any ballet as a kid. I took a beginner's class here at the local college when I was 26. Um, and I felt way out of place. You took the class at CSU. Yeah, yes, it was a six six week class. I think I mm -hmm. attended five weeks of it, and it was I think it was like a for the students just during their winter break to have something to stay conditioned. Um, but I wasn't getting any like personal treatment like I do now to kind of correct and make me into a better dancer. So I haven't had any background actually in ballet, and this was an opportunity after going to her. Actually, I started in November, yep. so it's been mm -hmm. nine months. Nine months? Yeah, it's almost been nine months, almost. Oh, you're almost gonna have your ballet anniversary. I know. So when the opportunity to have point at first, it was like something like, "Can I really do that?" But um, Natasha really encouraged us that it's possible, and because you know, as an adult, your feet are already fully grown mm -hmm. so you can you can do point and so that's been my my motivation I just want to it's just a dream it's something that I've always pretended to be a ballerina I love um, ballet and to be in point shoes is going to be just an amazing and emotional experience yes I can't wait to see I it know. I'm probably going to cry I know <laughs> they can like look mommy it's okay I got to be a ballerina anyway just so, just remember it's like some of that Excitement might dissipate the first time you put them on. <laughs> you have to like, oh. stuff in them. It's gonna be like, okay, this is not good. Yeah. <laughs> but once you get a hold of it, and I think this is also a great exercise in in grit and in you know transcending something that is originally painful, but that if you keep pushing, it's gonna become something beautiful. And yeah. To me, that's one of the main reasons to do point work is that yes, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna suck at first, but once you get it. You're gonna feel the beauty of it, and it's just like, oh, oh, oh this is awesome. So, time for the second. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Little bits of progress. That's like, <gasps> yeah. I 
love to have to see that in you guys and, and in myself too whenever i am consistent with something and then i nail it or at least it looks better yeah <laughs> i feel like okay this is working so i'm gonna keep going and i think that's something that you know in a non-dance like you said but you don't really get so much yeah well it's really hot here so we're gonna move back to the loft with the ac for the rest of this yes. interview, <laughs> and we'll see you guys in a little bit. So, um, thank you very much, Desiree, for coming to my channel, yeah. doing, doing the photos with me today. It's been fun. So much fun. So much fun. Yeah. And um, the, for my last question, mm -hmm. um, if you could embody one ballet character from the classical ballets, if that represents you the best, who mm -hmm. do you think it would be? have to say the swan lake princess. The white swan or the black one? Well, it's really both. <laughs> it's so awesome. I think every woman has both. That, but yeah, so that's why it's so awesome. I think that it's played by the same person because mm -hmm. it's really like you have your, your, your nice and sweet side, but then you have that side that's um, more Sultry, you know, sultry and sensual, and um, the duality of human nature. Yes, and I think so. That would probably be um, a good embodiment of me of you know the classicals I know of. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, if you guys don't know about the story of Swan Lake, or you want to find out more, um, a lot of people I just realized a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. a lot of the classical ballet stories, and some of them are kind of obscure and complicated. Yeah. So I decided to solve that problem by uh, posting videos that are gonna be five minutes of less or less, and they're gonna be uh, kind of funny, kind of, you know, cheesy. I wanna do some stuff animation, and I wanna talk some, but it's uh -huh. just gonna be like a Cliff Notes, classic ballet for idiots. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that way, if you are gonna go see it, or if you are gonna perform in it, you will get Kind of yeah. like the backstory, but it. Mm -hmm. in a funny way. So check her out. Watch for that. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you. And keep transcending. I will. Hey dancers, make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and share it with a friend that might also enjoy it. Also, <laughs> hey dancers, if you like this video, please give it a like and share it with somebody who might also enjoy it. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell if you want to get notifications for when I post another one. See you soon.